Today's topic is seven reasons why fit pros should start content marketing. And I think before we go into the seven reasons, James, do you want to define what exactly is content marketing? I knew you were going to ask me this, and I just literally thought by saying, "What's a what's a perfect what's a perfect definition?" Uh, content marketing is creating a content of any type to help educate the audience and help them achieve some goal or desire or some some something. There you go. How about that? They're helping them achieve and solve a problem. Some some something 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 dark side. There we go. Let's let's do that. It is. It's helping them solve problems. So it's all about creating awareness. So content marketing can be from blog posts. It can be from YouTube videos. It could be podcasts. This is essentially a form of content marketing we're doing right now. However, what we've seen over the years is, if we're being brutally honest, health and fitness professionals are not doing content marketing and doing it very well. In fact, it's the last thing they're doing half the time because they're so busy, stuck in the business, trying to help run their business, basically, they're technicians as opposed to content marketing machines. So hopefully we can give you seven very good reasons why you should be doing it. And if you're not doing it, well, consider doing it, which is the awareness side of things, and then helps you lead a decision, say whether you're going to do it yourself or outsource it to somebody else. Yeah. So number one, it nurtures and converts leads. Do you want to dive a little bit deeper into that one, James? Yeah, so the whole purpose of content marketing is to, for people who are unaware of you to find you, to learn more about you, and then start to convert them into leads. Now, leads is when you take some of these email address and data and they get onto your email list and you start to educate them about more about what, you, what you're trying to do and take them through a very healthy relationship almost. So you want to like start dating them essentially without doing all the, all the, all the stuff that comes with dating, like buying dinner and you know, marriage, all that sort of stuff, basically. As we've spoken about before, marriage is the very last step. You can't skip all the steps in between, can you? You don't ask them to marry you on a first date, do you? That's basically assault, as we've learned from the idea of the seven stages of, intim of intimacy. It's a great book, guys, about in terms of marketing. So, so yeah, so you've got to think about this. Content marketing helps nurture and convert leads. That's your whole purpose. Your website, your Instagram, your TikToks, your, all your social media platforms should be aimed for one thing help attract new leads, new potential customers in through your website, into your funnel to get them onto your email list. Nobody is doing that these days. And that's the what we're trying to get across to you guys. Yeah. Andrew, reason number two, it educates potential customers. Why is that important? Um, it's important because, well, essentially we've got to, we've got to build um, a, a level of trust. You know, these people, potentially these prospects don't know who we are, um, who we serve, and ultimately what services that we have on offer, which can potentially help them. So we've got to help them overcome that. And we can do that through educational content. And if we're answering questions that they've been searching for online, then, you know, that's going to give them um, some well, it gives us credibility. It raises our profile and showcases the skills that we have on offer, which can then lead them into wanting to find out more about what we have to offer. That could be if they're ready uh, to take that next step into booking into a strategy call, for example, would be a good example. Or if they're not quite ready, and as James says, if they're still a prospect and we want them to move into the lead portion of the the journey then they might want to download a, a lead magnet you have a checklist a cheat sheet nutrition plan or whatever but it's all about moving them from uh, being cold audience member through to um understanding what you have to offer and then ultimately um you know signing up in, in one way or the other and who else has got a lead magnet arnold schwarzenegger yeah <laughs> <laughs> now how funny is that Yes, we should, we should talk about that actually in a separate episode. Let's let's save that for a separate episode, right? Yeah, but I think just just touching on Andrew's subject there. So you got to think of the potential buyer or potential new client or patient, their journey. So there's three stages: awareness, consideration, and decision. Right. So awareness is let's use pain as an example. They've got a slight twinge in their back. Right. They've they're then going to go onto Google, search back pain, back pain rehab solutions or how to fix back pain. 
So what they're doing is they're searching for information about it. How could, what, why could it be caused? What's happening to it? That then goes to a blog post where they then go into the consideration phase, right? Because they now realize after trying for a few weeks, trying to get out of pain, they can't get out of pain and they need some help. Therefore, they start to look for physiotherapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, napopaths, right? In, in your local area to try and help you. So they're looking for a potential solution to the issue. They're not ready to, to go make that decision and commit yet, but looking for ideas. But what if there's somewhere who's written blogs about how much it costs, what to expect at your first appointment to the physiotherapist, all these sorts of things. It helps reinforce these ideas. So when it comes to the decision-making time, right? They may download a free guide on how to help you get out of back pain, but they've tried that, still doesn't work. So what they're going to do, they then go to that person. So there's awareness, consideration, and decision-making. You've got to think about those three stages. In fact, we should actually do and talk about the awareness side of things because we're doing a really good awareness campaign at the moment. It's working for Cricket Matters at the moment. So maybe we do that for an episode afterwards. I was going to say, do you want to do that on another podcast as well? We've got two more podcast episodes just right there. <laughs> Uh, number three, marketing is scalable and long term. What, James? What are the long term benefits of uh, content marketing? Oh, crikey! You get more traffic. It creates you more authority off of your website on Google. People find you, and it's what we call evergreen. Uh, in particular, in terms of blogs and YouTube videos, if you get the content right, and you get the search term right, and you get people who engage with that content. Google will reward you. Therefore, the more high quality content you put out that gets searched, it will then help reward all the other blog posts you put out after that too to help get found. We get, I'd say, a vast majority of all our leads coming into Strength Matters and the awareness side of the campaigns through our blog posts, through our YouTube channel and through our podcasts. So we're creating evergreen content that keeps coming and coming and coming. Whereas TikTok, as an example, less than 20 minutes maybe, if you're lucky, for a bit of content to last. Yep, unless it goes viral within a few seconds. You've then got Instagram, which is hard to, to, to grow your audience as well. That's less than a day potentially most of the time. And Facebook, who knows, as we said on the previous episode. So, like, we don't know. So it's scalable long-term. You've got to think about what is going to give you the most amount of time back and for me, it's blog posts, I think, into a YouTube and podcast where people can just consume more and more and more and it becomes evergreen content. Yeah, fantastic. Andrew, back to you for point number four. It's often cheaper in the long term. Why would that be? Why would it be more cost effective? Just with um, f um, social media advertising, so Facebook ads, um, Instagram ads and the likes, um, there's laws of economy here and I, I failed at economy. So um, um, <laughs> I, maybe I'm not the guy that should be talking about uh, economics, but demand and supply, there's that much supply now that um, the, you know, the pricing of advertising is going up on, on social media. And I read something um, a couple of weeks ago that realistically now we should have a, a minimum budget of a thousand pounds, dollars a month. To, to invest into our um, advertising. So that makes it um, challenging for a lot of fit pros to be able to have that. I was going to say, it's out of reach for a lot of uh, one to one for average fit pro, isn't it? It is. It is. You can get a little bit of um, success with the old five pound a day, but it, it's not enough these days really to, to uh, make an impact and to judge if your marketing efforts are working. So switching that content um, doesn't cost us anything monetary wise to put up a blog post. Obviously there is a cost element, there's a time investment to be made, but that's why we go all in on this because it, it historically, um, if you put a blog post up, for example, it would have took around three to six months for it to be found by Google, optimized, and then start raising in the rankings. But now we've got clients, Sam Attard of Spiro Collective, for example, puts up a post. Um, it's well optimized. It's on point with her key words. It's ranking number one already. And equally with some of our um, um, posts as well, we're, you know, we rank number one. So we know that the content marketing works and, you know, that's why we're, you know, spend significant amount of time on, on doing that ourselves and then equally recommending it to our client base. And also just in terms of cost, 
So I'll give you a rough idea. So the Strength Matters blog and the website gets approximately 75 to 80,000 hits a month. That's on average. If we were to do the same traffic, kind of like boost or like acquire the same amount of traffic via Google ads, let's go on average a dollar per click, right? That's about 80,000 pounds worth of advertising. Let's just put it into context now. So we are really going all in and creating content because it's cheaper, it creates more traffic. And for those who get this traffic and get the conversions, as we spoke about our, our growth formula, it's growth equals traffic times conversions times sales. If you get the traffic bit nailed, you optimize for conversions, then the sales will come as a result and you'll grow your business. So we are going all in on this. We want to, get, we want to see a million hits to our blog a month, not just you know, 50,000 and that will then exponentially, you know, create growth for the company and you should be aiming for something similar too. Yep. Uh, next point, James, word of mouth. How can that, uh, yeah, go, go for it. Go. You create epic content. They share it everywhere. As part of that awareness campaign at Cricket Matters, that's a great example of what we've just done recently. So we've created a video. It's, it's gone globally. It's created a whole load of new leads and potential customers long-term and more eyeballs onto me as a cricketer, but also Cricket Matters as a company too. So word of mouth, create great content that people want to share and enjoy. They will share it with the world. It's as simple as that. And there we go. Go. Point number six, it builds trust with customers. We can uh, we kind of mentioned this one before, but just quickly, why is that important? Either, either one of you, don't mind. Um, establishes your authority, gives credibility, um, and if you're consistent in posting good quality content, there's always that top of mind awareness then so that people within your local area, if you're a locally based business or your target audience, if you're online and running a hybrid style um, um, fitness operation, then you, you, top of mind, but credibility and authority uh, are the key points there. You know, you're answering those questions uh, that those people are, are searching for. Great. And finally, point number seven, your competitors are doing it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I would say if you are a gym owner, highly likely that competitor gyms are doing uh, content marketing. If you are a self-employed PT, perhaps not as likely. So therefore, you should do it in order to get ahead of the competition. Is that, would you agree? Yes, if you're staying within the same niche as personal trainers or gym owners. But what about the influencers? Look at who you're competing against, guys. Every personal trainer, gym owner, and fit pro I know moans and complains about the influencers. But what are they doing? Content marketing. It's as simple as that. Not necessarily doing it well. They don't know how to build a list or build a business off the back of it. They're just spraying and praying basically half the time. But they're doing it. They're technically your competitors. They are your competitors. So you can't not you know, see yourself competing with those guys. So... You know, all marketers now know the importance of content marketing and how important it is. All the big brands are investing into it massively. They spend millions on it because they know the importance of it. However, gym owners, personal trainers, studios, it is a blue ocean. And this is why we specialize in SEO and helping you guys do it because this is what we've done. This is what we think we should be doing to help you grow your health and fitness business. And we can help you. Absolutely. There we go. So that is seven reasons why fit pros should start content marketing in 2024. Get on it, guys. That is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. And if you want help getting more clients or patients, then book him for your free 15 minute strategy call with us by going to strengthmatters.com forward slash strategy.